Okay, I'm recording now. So uh, as I said, I'm Drew from NWA3D, and we are going to cover all of the, the different parts of like 3D printing, which I see 3D printers behind you already, so that part's probably going to be pretty easy for y'all. And then the next part is like troubleshooting and things that are particular to this printer, but also some stuff that might help you with your other printers uh, as well. So um, you guys have 3D printed before then, I'm guessing? We, we've attempted, yes. Mm -hmm. with our, we have MakerBot and LesBot. And yeah, the mini loads. Yeah, but th we've had issues with them. And so you were recommended. So we want to give it a shot. We, yeah, who recommended us? Um, the, we have a center of innovation um, at one of our other campuses, and they have ordered six from you, JSTEM, Judson Independent School District. Oh, Judson, yeah, totally. Yeah. With uh, Deborah Wright, Deborah Price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, so that's our main goal is to make sure that they are working and that they're integrated into like the curriculums and things you want to do. So they're not just, not only are they working, but they're not just pumping out toys all the time too. Right. Um, I mean, Baby Yoda is awesome or, you know, little pogs from the new Star Wars movie, but you know, they're not really learning anything if they're, uh, they're printing those out. So we want to have the students actually design um, all their different models and all those different things. So um, that's the first big step too of, 3D printing. So have you guys used um, a, like a CAD program before with your students? Um, not with our students, but we've attempted to, to try it before we've used. We're, we're both new on board with all of this. Sweet. So we played with Tinker, Tinkerbot. Is that right? Yeah. Thingsavers? That's Thingsaver? Yeah. And Cura, Cura Cura. Yeah. So Tinkercad is awesome. Is that, that's the web browser where you move the shapes around and you can make holes and stuff like that in them? Yeah, you can manipulate the, the shapes. Yeah, Tinkercad's great. And that's definitely where I would suggest um, starting off. We actually have lesson plans and stuff on how to go through Tinkercad on our website. Oh, um, wow, okay. Go through, um, that you can even use with your students if you want that can like walk you through um, how to go and do like basic things and then you'll be able to do other stuff um, with them as well. So yeah, we have all that on our, on our website if you wanna see. And Tinkercad's great because it's uh, pretty easy to get a grasp on after a couple minutes. To, and the students, if you just throw it in front of them and say, like, here's how to do this, this, and this, they're going to be like, and I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. And they'll blow you away with the stuff that they can do. It's awesome. Um, and then once they get good at that, there's other apps that they can kind of move up into. So um, SketchUp Pro is really good, too, but that has to be on a computer. So that's one of the really nice things about Tinkercad, too, is you can do it on a Chromebook or a tablet. Um, so what, what access to technology do you guys have? At the Boys and Girls Clubs. iPads. The iPads actually have Tinkercad. I've seen oh, that. Oh, really? iPads. Okay. Wait, yeah. So, okay. If you guys have iPads, then I would suggest um, Tinkercad and then Onshape is the next one. That's really, both of those are great for iPads. Okay. Um, Onshape yeah, is. Oh, wait, he's going to record it too. Okay. Yeah, I'm recording it. And I'll also send you the links after this. Because I'm going to send them, so I'll send you the links. So you can still write it down if you want, but I'll send them to you so you'll have them. Um, but it's onshape.com. And that is. Uh, like a more traditional CAD program where you actually like draw the shapes in 2D and then pull them out in 3D to be able to create different types of stuff. Wow. Um, Onshape's great. It's just a little bit more advanced. So that's why we always suggest starting with Tinkercad. Um, and then if you guys go up to like junior high and high school, you can do Fusion 360 too, but that has to be done on a Windows or a Mac um, computer. So uh, you can definitely do tons of amazing things um, with, with Tinkercad and Onshape, though. So just by sticking with those, your students can still do some really cool stuff. Um, and that's going to be the biggest first step where the students are designing stuff. It's what's going to take the longest, too. So um, it takes a, a lot of practice to kind of figure out how to make something, especially the perspective of, like, these two things look like they're touching, but then when you rotate it, they're not touching. Um, and stuff like that kind of takes a little bit to get the hang of. Um, but once they get that, and you have that 3D file, that's, the, that's that first step. So, um, and you mentioned Thingiverse, too. Thingiverse is a repository where there's tons of 3D files that people have already made. Um, and that's out there as well, um, Thingiverse.com. And uh, so with, with uh, Thingiverse or with Tinkercad or Onshape or whichever one of those programs you use, you have to have it in a file format that the printer can read. And the, the original format that you need is .stl or .obj. Those are the two file types. Um, and those are the two file types that you're going to have to have that 3D model in. And then once you have one of those file types, you're going to put that in the program called Cura, C-U-R-A. Um, and then when you put that in Cura, then that's the second step. 
Um, and Cura is actually going to translate um, that STL or that OBJ file to what's called G code, which is what the printers read. And you don't have to know how to code to do it. You'll just basically set like how fast you want it to print, how hot you want it to print, where you want your model to be on the print bed, and then you hit slice. And then when you do that, it actually takes the model and saves it to the SD card. And that is this thing right here, little tiny micro SD, like this one, which is like that. Oh, and you'll save your file onto this. And this is the transfer step that you guys uh, will take your file to get it to the printer. So some, some printers, you plug them straight into to the computer. You can do that with this, too. Otherwise, other ones, you can send stuff wirelessly. But we like using the SD cards because wireless connections don't always work. And if it's tethered, the machine has to be on and has to have the program open. So if somebody accidentally closes the program or logs out or something like that, the print's going to fail. So you won't be able to print stuff that's going to last, you know, print, you know, print for a couple days if somebody turns the computer off. Um, so that's why it helps to have them printing with these. And then they also don't have to be in the same room that the students are designing in. So they can design in one classroom and the printers can be in another one. And uh, they don't have to be tethered there right together because you can just save stuff to the SD card. And that's the third step, where you're actually going to transfer that file to the printer. And then the fourth step is where you're actually just going to hit print using the screen on the printer. Um, and then that, it, all, all the robot is going to do then is going to print your print. So it's design a model is the first step. And then slice the model in Cura is the second step. And then transfer the model to the printer using the SD card. That's the third step. And then the fourth step is actually hitting print on the printer. And no matter what type of 3D printer you're going to use, it's going to have basically those four steps in maybe a little bit different way. Um, like MakerBots, for instance, they have a uh, MakerBot desktop that they use, and that's their slicer like Cura. Um, Lulzbot, they have a different version of Cura that we use, so we'll actually download a different version than the Lulzbot version. Um, it's like blue instead of uh, green. Um, but that's the same concept that you would use, is you have to put it in that slicing program before you can get it to the printer. Mm -hmm. okay. so do you all have any questions about that? No, no. I, 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 I think I'm going to go ahead and log on and then you can mute me. But I yeah. also have to plug in because I don't have a, I have half the charge on my computer. How's your charge? Yeah, that's fine. That's uh, all okay. Let's see here. So. Yeah, and if you just don't join audio, then it shouldn't okay. be a problem either. But if you do, I'll just hit mute. So okay. I'll, be, I'll be ready. Okay. So what did you do here? Just hit save? I didn't do anything like that. You didn't? You just went to meeting? Because you're scheduling the meeting. Oh, I don't want to schedule. I want to join a meeting. Oh. Yeah, you can join. And then type that number in. So it's this number right here. You want me to give it to you again? Let's see. Oh. 938. 938, okay. 967. Uh huh. 428. How did it come up online? And then you should just hit join, and it should pop up. And you should pop up right here. Yeah. Okay. Can you see me? I, I can see you and. Yeah. Then you don't even need to join anything else. If you can see me, you're good. No. Continue. Right. Okay. So, so do we need to plug in our? Um, we we have unpacked um, some of the printers that y'all sent us. Awesome. And so, should we go ahead and print uh, plug those in? Are you going to be uh, walking us through all this or just? We, yes, we're definitely going to walk you through. You guys are going to print today, totally. Um, but before we print it in, though, let's go ahead. I wonder if we should each sit at one of these tables where the, there's yeah. outlets there. Yes. So can a second to transfer to a table where there's an outlet? That's totally fine. Okay. We're going to install Cura on your computer. So do you guys have admin rights? Can you do that? The, I'm sorry, the what? You got admin rights, so you can install stuff? Do we're going to install stuff? Uh, we, we can install them in our, on our Mac. Okay, awesome. That, okay. Yeah, that's great. Yes. Go over Robot's still on, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm okay, we can recharge his battery. You have a robot? <laughs> We're doing oh, a, robot. a Lego. Awesome. Yeah, so. I used to do like robots. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 oh, perfect. 
so we cool. just received, uh, we just bought some new things and printers, and so they are getting them set up and ready to go. Well, that's not I'm going to need to plug in my computer. Over here. So here it's a makerspace. Um, and actually, Diana, who's our STEM director, and Gina, who runs our Center of Innovation and Justice, they've got some real video conference. <laughs> they, uh, they, they built this new Hello, tour. <laughs> um, okay. so, like this? But this most of the STEM is uh, also This is I'm really excited. <laughs> I know. We got Christmas for us, Drew. This is exciting. That's great to hear. Okay. Okay, we're ready. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally fine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is first we're going to install Cura on your computers. So with the uh, 3D printers came this little drive. Looks like this. Okay. And this has part in it. Like this. And this is what we're going to use to print with. So we're going to take this and plug them into our computers. Okay. And that has Cura on it. Oh, super. I think I might have Cura. We, we downloaded them last time, right? Um, if you said there's two different versions. Oh, oh, okay. So this yeah, one's so a different version than the Wolves bought one. Find yours? Maybe it's in the box? Wait, is it there? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, it's going to be a different different one than the Wolves bought one. Oh, nice Wolves. Oh, wait, I can't get it. Because I don't have the USB and I left my thing at home. Oh, okay. So, so Gina doesn't, doesn't have that compatibility on her Mac, so she's just going to kind of look on with me on that piece right now. We don't oh, have yeah, that's right. The new Macs don't have USB ports. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, do, you have, do you have an SD card port? No. Really? Oh. No, yeah, it only has a charger. That's interesting. You know, and cool. but I bought those. I have those things at home though. Oh, okay. Oh, so, uh, okay. Yeah, you need like the little lightning like connector or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. Well, um, you can download it if you want. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just type in Cura, and then in Google, and then the correct version is going to be fifteen point oh four point six. So if you want to type in Cura fifteen, and then click like browse all versions. And uh, that'll pop that one up because that's the one that we're going to put on there. Okay. And if, uh, yeah, that's the one that we're going to do. 15. Yep, 15.04.6. You're about to download this one? Oh, no. No. You find it? Um, I can look for it. Yeah, like browse all versions and then scroll down a little bit. Um, and so here's the the reason that we're using that one um, is that we haven't upgraded our manual yet, yet to the new uh, version 3.1. Um, that one worked great too. Both of them work good. Um, they're just both a little bit differently, but I don't want to train you with something that you can't reference on your manual. Because everything has like screenshots and step-by-step -step and all that kind of stuff on your on the user manual. No, I, I can't find it. Can you get it right off Google? So go back one. So 15.04.6. Yeah, you should be able to click browse all versions on like Ultimaker Cura. Mm -hmm. So if you just Google Cura 15, um, then you should be able to click like browse all versions is normally one of the first things that you can choose. It's like download Cura and then you can even click on download Cura now and then there's gonna be a little like link that you click download all versions. Because mm -hmm. then you guys can both install the same one. That'd be the easiest. You want to just look online? Yeah. Okay, well, she'll just look online for right now. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, too. 
Yeah, so go ahead and grab um, yeah, the SD card and plug it in. And then open up Cura. It's inside the Cura folder. And then go ahead and install it. And you're going to get to a screen that says um, first time run wizard. And that's going to be the install screen for what type of printer that you have. So it's going to ask you to choose your printer. So go ahead and install it. And then when it says finish installation, when that's done, it's going to pop up and ask you what printer you have. Um, and while you're waiting, if you guys want, you can build this. So this is your spool holder. So if you guys want to build these, you can go ahead and put them together. You'll use your toolkit to, uh, to get the Allen wrench out to be able to piece them together. And they fit together kind of strangely, but you, uh, you loosen this bolt like all the way, and then this one fits inside of it like this. And then you tighten it. Until it's nice and snug. But not too tight because it'll crack. Just until it's snug. Yeah, the trick is to not take the bolt all the way off, but just get it to the end. Like that. And then it'll kind of, you can wiggle it and fit it in there. Um, we kind of missed that piece. I see the piece that you're using. Yeah. So it's right here. And oh, you do it together, like, like this one right here. Looks like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then loosen the bolt almost to the end, uh, or loosen the nut almost to the end of the bolt. And then this, it fits in here like this. Oh, okay. It's pretty weird. And then you'll tighten it. Does that make sense? You get it? Like this. Oh, so it's on that one. Yes. Yeah. And then you want to make sure the Allen wrench uh, is on the outside so you can tighten it. So the little uh, nut is going to fit in that little groove like that. Is it another one challenge? Mm -hmm. And it's like the second smallest Allen wrench that will fit in there. Okay. And then it'll sit like this. And then the bolt goes on top of it. Like that. How's the insulation coming? Um, I think it's there. Drag to install. Let's see. Yep. Go ahead and just yeah, drag that into your application folder. And then when that gets done, um, go ahead and go to your applications folder and open it up. And it'll say first time run wizard. So I should have an icon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you drag it in your applications folder, then it'll be in your applications. Okay. 
All right. Can minimize it? Oh, oh there we go. Sorry. Beautiful. Good. All right, so I'm going to do this. These should be like that. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to tighten it. Close it around one end. And just not, not too tight, right? Because they can break? Yes, just snug, just so they don't wiggle. Did you get it? Just about. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to put that other part on top? Yeah. Oh. It'll sit like that. Because your filament is going to sit on there like this. I was looking at your side again last night, Drew, because I was, my, my youngest son is an engineer and I was like, he would love this toy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I was like, contemplating. Okay. Yeah, we don't sell for your kits, but there are a lot of, uh, of good kits out there too if he wants to build one from scratch. Oh, okay. With your company? No, not with us. We don't, we don't sell kits. But um, there's one that's really awesome called Jelly Box, and that's a kit. Um, and it's great. Uh, it's, a really good, it's a really good one. Let me know. Yeah, we these work just right out of the box. We used to sell kits, but um, we figured out that we couldn't guarantee that they're going to work if they get built by a class. And also, some classes got really bogged down, and it would take them like weeks to build it. Oh, wow. it, can, it can be really frustrating if you if you haven't three D printed before and um, you don't know what you're doing. So we didn't want to um, to have that that burden on classes to try to you know hurry up and finish building their kit or something like that. So. Um, and kits sometimes are notorious for missing parts and stuff. So it takes quite a bit of problems already to be able to put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, but Jellybox is great because they have individual videos for every single one of their steps. And they back all of their products and stuff. Um, and they're great. We've talked to them several times. Did you find it? It's, so it's on this side right here on the bottom. So did you guys get Cure installed? Yes, we have it on one of the. Okay. Yeah, so you want to just go ahead and open it up in the applications until it says first time run wizard. And then we'll set up what type of printer that we have. Okay. I was just trying to figure out how to turn mine on. Okay. Thank you. That's a good question. So Gina was just asking, every time we automatically plug in the 3D printer, it starts, that's the startup? Yep, that's the startup. You don't have a switch? Nope. Yep. You just unplug it and plug it back in. Okay. It's the simplicity of them that, that helps it to be really reliable. So less things that go wrong. And uh, and these just plug in right into their little Arduino boards. So okay. you don't need an on-off switch. Okay. So on the Cura site, and you did just asked me to do something. I don't. Oh, yeah. Just open up, open up Cura, okay. like on your computer. Yep. Got it. And then it'll say like first time run wizard and ask you to set your machine type. You see that? Maybe go to file. Like when you, when you double click on the blue C inside of your applications folder. Mm -hmm. The blue C for Kira. Yeah, did that. Does it say first time run wizard? Did that pop up? No, it just popped up the whole. Uh... Yeah, I had downloaded before, so I guess it was the version that I downloaded is my guess, because it's already on there. Okay, but it's not asking you to add a new machine? No. Okay, then we're going we're gonna to add a new machine then. Um, okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So when I say share screen, just hit escape, and it'll make it come out of full screen. Um, and then you'll have to, does it look like this? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. so click on machine, and then we're going to go to add new machine. Okay. Okay. 
Is it? Yeah, we're there. there. Okay. And then go ahead and click next. And then we're going to click other. Oh, oh, oh. You can hit escape and then that'll bring it out of full screen. You can even minimize it on your computer since you, you're watching it um, on Gina's. Okay, so we click OK? okay. Uh, yeah, you want to click other as the machine type. Do you guys see the same screen as me? Yeah, we're on that, that one. Hold, hold on. Yours should look just like mine. This Mac is funny. It's so hard to, for me to. So minimize or no? No, we have to exit out because mm -hmm. we don't leave out. That yeah, but that's his screen. Oh, that's so we his. need to go back to Kira. Kira. So I need to go to apps. Yeah. So you can just click on your dock and it'll pop it back up. Mm -hmm. See. Okay, Dave. Escape. Escape again? Yeah. Because remember the first time when you escaped, it went straight to his. Um, you can't just go to file. I'm not getting that screen. So select your machine. Did you did you select where? Do you, does yours look like this? Uh, it was. Then um, you gotta click machine and then add new machine. Up here at the top. Machine settings right here, maybe? No, add new machine. Uh, I don't know that. But we're trying to uh, minimize it. Yeah. Okay, well, the only way I minimize, this is minimized. It's not, it's minimized. It's not letting me, unless I get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can like get mine out of the way on your screen, and then you can just look at it on Gina's if you want. Oh, okay. I got it. We got it. Okay. The wizard will help you in setting up cure for your machine. Next. We click next, right? Yeah. Yes. Next. Yeah, other. So does it look just like this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, awesome. So go ahead and click other then for the machine type. And you only have to do this once. So you'll only do it the first time you set everything up. So okay. we'll only do this one time. And then next. And then Mendel is the operating system. M-E-N-D-E-L right here. Gregory Mendel. Okay. And then next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then finish. Woo! Okay, so finish. And then now uh, we're going to set these settings up and then we're going to set the size of our build area. And like I said, you only have to do this the first time that we do it. So today, um, the, the, each one of these settings, when you scroll over it, it'll tell you in depth what they do, but I'm going to talk about them with you so you can kind of see. So the first one is the layer height. So that's literally how tall each one of the layers are um, before they get stuck together. So uh, you, as it's layering layer by layer by layer by layer to build stuff, um, if it's 0.1, that's the closest it can do. That's a high quality because it's only going to move up a tenth of a millimeter before it lays down another layer. Um, 0.3 is the lowest quality because it's going to move up to 0.3 and then put down another layer. So it's not going to look as nice, but it's going to be a lot faster. And 0.2 is right there in the middle. So that's a good balance between speed and quality. So we like to print at 0.2 um, on layer height, but you can change that to whatever you want. Um, 0.1 will take longer but look better, and 0.3 will be faster but not look as nice. Okay. Take the middle ground. Mm -hmm. So the shell thickness is going to be 0 0.8. And that is going to be the thickness of the outside part of your model. So the shell thickness has to be a multiple of our nozzle size. So that's why it's yellow right here, because we have to change our nozzle size right here to 0 0.4. And that's the thickness of the outside part of our model. So if we want to make it thicker on the walls of our model, we would just keep adding 0.4 to that shell thickness to make like a really durable print. But two shells is really good. So you can leave it like that. Okay. And then the next is the bottom and top thickness, and that's going to be the same as the shell thickness, so 0 0.8. And that's literally just the top thickness and the bottom thickness of your model. And then the fill density, that's how much is filled up inside of your model. So 0% is hollow, and then 100% is solid. So 20% is somewhere in that middle ground, and usually between 5 and 20% is a good place to have it filled in. Cause then you don't have to use tons of filament to have it completely solid. And if it's hollow, it won't be able to like stretch across and print across like big complicated things. It'll like sag down inside of there. So having about five to 20% um, is really good. 
And then the print speed, that's how fast it can print. So this printer can print really fast, but with all 3D printers, uh, we recommend printing at 50 millimeters a second because it's a good balance between speed and quality. If you want to print slower than that, you can to make it look nicer, but we don't recommend printing faster than 50, otherwise problems can happen. Because okay. it's trying to print so fast that one layer isn't stuck down all the way before it starts printing the next, and it can peel up and cause problems. Yeah. And then the temperature is going to be 220. And that is what this material is going to melt at. And this is called PLA. And it's biodegradable corn plastic. So it's totally safe. And it's made from corn. Um, and if you have PLA for your MakerBot, that it's the same size filament as this, it will work in this printer. So you can run it on this printer. So the filament that you have on the MakerBot, you can. The LulzBot, you can't because it's thicker. It's a thicker gauge. Um, but the smaller filament, you can. As long as it's PLA. And the same thing goes for this filament in your MakerBot. You can run this in your MakerBot, too. Oh, OK. They just don't want you to know that because they want you to buy their stuff. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the bed temperature, we're going to set to zero. Because this does not have a heated bed. And you don't need to have a heated bed with the PLA um, because it'll stick really well to this surface. And that's what this surface is on the printer, too, that says NWA3D. It's a special surface, and that's what these clips are to take it off, that the prints can stick to really well. Um, so you can take this thing off and then bend it to be able to pop the prints and stuff off of it so you don't need to have a heated bed. So this you just have to make sure it's attached to it when you print it. So I'm just curious, like, you know, on Maker, and don't mean to get off the subject of your, of your equipment, but those beds heat. Yes, they do. They're required to heat. Right? What's that? They're required to heat. Uh, some of them, yeah, some, some of the MakerBots do, but you don't, you don't have to print with a heated bed. If you do, though, with, P, with any sort of PLA, I recommend heating it to 50 degrees. Um, okay. um, so on your MakerBots, you can set them to 50 degrees, and then that's a good printing temperature. Because we have some, I have a lot of experience with MakerBots. We don't sell them, but um, I've had a lot of experience with them. And we've also, um, we have printers that have heated beds, and for PLA, you just want to have the bed set to 50 degrees if it has a heated bed. Okay. And then the support type, we're going to go ahead and click everywhere. So if it ever needs supports, it will automatically generate them. Otherwise, if you were printing like a house and you had a doorway, well, then if it, if it had a doorway, it might sag down and not be able to print across the top of the doorway. But with the supports, it would print support structure automatically that you would just pop out using the pliers that come in the toolkit. And then the last thing is the diameter of the filament. And that is written on the side of the filament right here which says 1.75. And now all these settings are set and we're gonna set the size of our build area. So we're gonna click machine again on top and then click machine settings. Machine settings. Machine settings? Yep. And then we're going to change these machine settings with the width, depth, and height. We're going to set the width to 125, which is about 5 inches. The depth is going to be 150, which is about 6 inches. And the height, 100, which is about 4 inches. And then we're going to uncheck the heated bed right here. And then that'll make that heated bed thing go away. So this setting, these settings right here, this is what you're going to see on your uh, uh, screenshot on each one of the SD cards. You can find the screenshot that has all of these settings here and these settings here. So if you want to set it up another computer, you can see all that in reference. It's also in the user manual. Um, it's going to be in this video. We have another video that's exactly how to set up Cura and all those different settings. So they, you can go and check and make sure that you get all these settings set up um, correctly like they need to be. Um, and the printer... It prints this big, so this box is how big it prints, or five by six by four inches. So this entire blue area is your print surface, and it prints as tall as this box. So pretty much this entire printer is made up by the build surface, and that's why we just set that up to be five by six by four inches. So we'll click OK right here, and then now our printer is exactly how we need it to be. You probably see a little robot right here. Do you see a little robot? No. 
No. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys already downloaded it. So let's go ahead and load a model into it. So that first step is designing a model. And then this is the second step where you would slice. So you need to load a model into Cura and you can either drag and drop the model in, or we can click load. And then if you navigate to the SD card, you'll see an STL file folder. So you can go to the NWA3D card and go to STL files, and then you'll see some .stl files right here. So you can load one. Oh, I need to put this in there. Yeah. It's on this side. And then when you find it, you'll just hit open. Okay. So let me know when you get one loaded. Mm -hmm. so. STL file. And then after STL files, where do we go? Uh, then go ahead and click on either the keychain or the dice. It's on there. And you'll also see there's a spool holder. So if your spool holder breaks, you can actually 3D print a new one of those too, if you want. Oh, really? What is it? That's this thing. You can print whatever you want. You can even print a piece of the spool holder if you want. And then select one of those .stl files and then hit open. Okay, we got oh, the keychain. We did keychain. Sweet. Yeah, it's totally fine. So now this is how we can move our models around. So you can scroll in and out by using two fingers on your trackpad or a scroll wheel. You can right click or use two fingers on the mouse pad to kind of move them around. And this build area is where your models are going to print. So if I put this in this front right corner, it's going to print in the front right corner of our printer. So you could add multiple models to it. So if you wanted to load, like if I want to load the keychain on this too, I could. As long as when you put the models in here, they're yellow. If they're gray, that means they're outside of the build area and they're not gonna be sliced, so they won't print. So you can put as many models as were fit inside of here, as long as they're yellow. You can even rotate models around. So I can click on this and actually rotate it side to side to be able to move them. So I could even move this if I wanted to, to make sure that it was adjusted. But we wanna make sure that it has the most surface on, as possible that's touching the build plate. So this right here isn't a good way for it to print. So that's why we can kind of move around and experiment with rotating. And you can actually see the different rotates by clicking the view mode and then layers right here. And you can see the support structures that will be generated. So this turquoise, that's that support everywhere that we set. Oh, wow. And th this is our layer view. So this is what each individual layer of the 3D printer is gonna do. So you can kind of scroll down here and here, there's that infill. That's what we set right here. So if I change this infill to 5%, you'll see this inside of our models is going to change because now it's only going to be 5% filled in. See? Yeah. So that's how you can see how strong or how, uh, how weak you want to print your models and how durable you want them to be. So I can go ahead and click on view mode and then back to normal here. And this one though, I want it to be flat back on the surface. So I'm going to click rotate and then I'm going to go up here where it says lay flat. And it'll flatten it. You can also change the scale of your model as well. So one is 100%. And if you use the digital caliper that came in your toolkits, since you guys have those toolkits, you can use the calipers to measure an exact size of something down to a tenth of a millimeter to 3D print it. Oh, so wow. that's what helps a lot with prototyping. If you want to make robots or if you want to make, you know, door stops or, or cup holders, whatever type of stuff you want to actually measure, you can design it in Tinkercad or Onshape to be down to a tenth of a millimeter and it will print at that tenth of a millimeter scale. But if you're not worried about that, you can change the scale by dragging these boxes and you can make stuff a lot larger or a lot smaller to change how long it's gonna to take to print. Cause you can see the print time up here. Now it's gonna take 50 minutes. So I'm gonna move this down so it's like under 30 minutes to be able to print both of them. And then now, now it's only 22 minutes because I've moved them around. But you'll see the scale has changed right here um, with these numbers. So that's something to keep in mind too. If you wanna make some, some student models smaller, because it doesn't matter the exact size to make sure that they print in a reasonable amount of time. You can adjust that right here. And this is really close to the time that it's going to take. It's within about five or 10 minutes. So it's really accurate too. Cause that's a problem with some other 3d printers would be like, Oh, it's going to take an hour. And then eight hours later, it's still printing something. So uh, <laughs> it helps to have this, this time be really accurate. So now what we can do is we can save this to our SD card. So you can click right here, save toolpath. Or if this says SD on your computer, it will save it automatically and you can right click and choose where you save it. But if you click save toolpath, then you can choose your SD card. And this is that third step where you're transferring the file. So you make a file in Tinkercad, you put it in Cura, 
and then you export it from Cura by clicking that save to SD card onto the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my SD card and then I'm going to change the name of it too. So I'll see it to my name and then hit save. And now it's saved to that SD card. So we can eject our SD card from our machine. So we can right click on it, click eject, or you can drag it into the trash can, however you want to do it. And then that is going to transfer to our printer. So you're going to take that SD card and it clicks in the front of the printer right underneath this little knob right here. So it goes in here and clicks. And it clicks in and clicks out. And then if your filament was loaded and it was all ready to go, you would literally just plug it in and then hit print on the printer. And that's the fourth step. Oh, that little piece? Yeah, so this piece goes in. So does that make sense? That like process, that workflow of 3D printing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and stick it in the front of your printer right here. Okay. And, and, and then go ahead and plug it in. Yeah, it's plugged in. All right. Okay, awesome. So now what we're ready to do is we are going to uh, check our printer out. So there are four big troubleshooting things that come up with 3D printing. The first one is making sure that Cura is all set up properly. Um, and if Cura is all set up like it should be, then you're good to go. And that can be like digital problems, like it doesn't have supports, or it's trying to print too fast, or if it has a heated bed, it's going to say bed heating error on there, and, um, and things like that. So you want to make sure that all your settings are set up. The second thing is making sure that the machine itself isn't damaged or broken. So that's what we're going to check right now. We're going to make sure that there aren't any cracked parts of the machine. We're going to make sure that the belts are all tight, and especially, nothing came unplugged. So that's what we're going to do right now. So if you guys want to check your printers out. We're going to move these back and forth, and that'll make sure that these belts are tight by moving this back and forth and this back and forth. And then go ahead and look at the bottom and make sure the bottom's not cracked. And then check these plugs over here on the side and make sure that everything is plugged in. So the X motor right here that moves side to side, this is plugged in and the switch is plugged in. The Y motor right here that moves the plate, that's plugged in. The is plugged in. And then the Z motor that goes up and down, make sure that's plugged in right there. And then the E motor right here, that's what feeds the filament in, that's plugged in as well. So kind of check and make sure that all those plugs are plugged in. Because if you're moving them from class to class, um, and sometimes in shipping, these plugs come unplugged. Okay, so wait. Uh, yeah, I do have something unplugged. Okay. Yeah, sometimes when you, they get like the foam expands and stuff, they, get to, they come unplugged. Okay. okay, mine's not cracked, but it looks like Gina's is cracked. So mine's cracked, and one of those little parts to plug it in is broken. It is. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see it, but this little piece, the little uh -huh. wires are broken, and then the under um, underneath it's cracked. Okay, so can you plug the cord? Can you pl still plug it in at all, or are the pens all bent? Um, they're all, yeah, they're all bent. Okay, so we can actually bend those straight, and it'll plug in. Um, and then can you show me the base plate? Let me show you this first. So right in here. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So it's been a long time since we've had one show up crack cracked. I think it's the, uh, the, in the Christmas rush, they're starting to throw our printers around again. <laughs> um, so that's all covered under warranty, so you don't have to worry. We're going to send you guys um, all the parts and stuff like that. Do you guys still have the boxes that it came in? Yes, we do. Uh -huh. um, does, does that box that that one came in look damaged? Mm, let me see. Not really. It just looks like it was scraped a little on the side, maybe. Okay. Um, so can I have you guys do me uh, a favor? Mm -hmm. Could you take pictures of the... Uh, the, the top of the box where it has the, uh, uh, the shipping label and then take a picture of the printer where the pins are bent and then take a picture of the bottom of it and then either text those pictures to me or email them to me because we just need all that for our records. And then can you go ahead and open up the other printers that you guys got and check those too? Okay, I'll let go. I need to go get those from the closet. If you give me a second, you guys have. It, uh, we're getting close to an hour. Do you guys have over an hour? Is that okay? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we're accounted for. So yeah, so you guys want to go ahead and grab those? That'd be great. So we can just check them all at the same time. Yellow, and if you wanted to do the dice, I was trying to save it on this, and I'm gonna go get the. Um, okay. Maybe we can set up another one for you. Okay. 
So I, I was kind of trying to fix the little the the little wires. Yeah, I it looks it looks like the whole bracket is broken off. Yeah. Oh. So. so I should just unplug it, right? Yeah, you can just unplug that one. We are okay. um since th it would print with the base plate being cracked, but it won't print with this being messed up. So um, what we'll do is. Uh, uh, I'm going to put you in touch with service and then they'll give you the next steps either to replace it or to uh, send you the parts for you to fix it or probably send you the parts are you comfortable with, with uh, taking it apart and fixing it um, not really okay but I would love to learn I can try um, yeah we could send you like another motor and another base plate and you can just put them on there um, and we do another video conferencing like this for you to install them. That's more than likely what the service team will have you do. Okay. If, if you're comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. yep. If not, we'll have you put it back in the box and send it back to us. Make sure all this stuff stays together. All these mm -hmm. We'll keep this one for so you can use that. So you can use it. Oh, you, you want to use this one, right? Yeah, Okay. Should I lay it on the side to keep it down? That's what I did with What do you want me to say? Put it over here so you can print it. What? This one? Yeah, that one's on there. pack everything in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to try to prevent any uh, breakage. <laughs> this one looks good. Awesome. Yeah, I can see how that could have happened. It looks like the some of like the spools are laying against it. So maybe you know with a little tossing it might have happened. There you go. Okay. All right. Um well you can start on that I'm gonna go check the other um, is that what you wanted us to do, Drew? Yes, please. Just to, just to make sure that um, if you guys need more parts, and we have it all done today, so we okay, can let me, let me keep get to printing as soon as possible. So, yeah. This one looks good. Okay, great.
How they look? So far, so good. We just we we bumped all the boxes, right? Um, awesome. Okay, one more box. Mm -hmm. Whoa, it's not pushing. Yeah, it's actually not pushing. Yeah, he said we can straighten that out. That's interesting because these are still connected. Huh. Is something wrong with that one? Yeah, that one's not connected, and the little prongs are um, bent. But I was telling you, maybe we can straighten them and try to reinsert that. You can. Yeah, you totally can. You just have to be really careful when you're bending them. But yeah, you totally can. Because if you can use the, the little needle nose pliers that come with the in the toolkit and mm -hmm. bend them straight and plug it back in. Okay. And we'll walk you through that too at the same time if you uh, that our service team talks you through everything else. We'll just do that like after Christmas when we get it shipped to you. Because it's probably going to take a bit for the base plate to get to you anyway with all the Christmas shipping and stuff like that. So probably on like the 20, like the end of next week or, or we'll probably maybe the week of January. We'll help you out. First week of January. That's perfect. We just had a uh, order placed with us on 40 uh, items. So <laughs> it's a club. Yeah, at least if we get some of them going. Oh, yeah. Like 40 things to print? Like 40 things to 3D print? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. They're just our little um, boys and girls um, hand symbol. Uh, symbol. Oh, okay. Well, you guys are totally be able to do that on the other printers that work. Um, yeah, if we get them uh, serviced. <laughs> we have some issues with them right now. Yeah, well, you'll have, I mean, you guys have like, um, you got sick printers, didn't you? We do. Um, they're they're four years old. Oh, I mean the ones that you just bought. Did you just buy six? Yeah, these we just bought. We can do with these. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can print on these because you have four of these that still work. So you can, you can do forty stuff in no time. You'll be able to do ten on each one of them, and you'll be able to knock them out. So you're, you're seeing how you're feeding the filament. Oh, we'll do that in a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, so are all the all the printers look good? Yeah, you, you, um, yeah, it, yeah just the, the Those that two. one. Oh, is it two? What? Are they one or two? What? The printers. It oh, the other one, the other one, you don't think these are bent? Mm -hmm. um, no, it was just that, that one that uh, we showed you. Okay, so the, this other one, these cords don't look bent? Because I thought you mentioned one of these look bent. Yeah, on the on one of the other packets yeah. we just opened. Yes. Okay. Can you take a picture of that too? Okay. Um, that to me as well, as well as um, the packing label from that box. That would be awesome. You can either text it to me or you can email it to me, because okay. we, we need all that for uh, for our records and stuff, oh, for okay. our own like internal stuff and for FedEx. All right. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, you can just email them straight to me or I can give you my number, you can text them, whatever is easier. Okay. So we're plugged in and everything's ready. Okay, sweet. So yeah, that's that first step is making sure that everything's running. Uh, so um, to troubleshooting, we, we went over Cura, making sure those are right, and then we checked the printer and making sure all that's good. So we got two printers that look, that look good, that nothing's broken on. And then the third step, that is the hardest and longest step, and that's making sure that the uh, printer itself is level. So to level the printer, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this nozzle around and then we're gonna adjust these little screws on the bottom of the printer right here. 
And okay. I'm going to be picking my printer up and moving it around, but you want to leave yours flat on the build surface when, while we're adjusting. Exactly. And we're only going to adjust those three bolts. We don't want to move this up and down at all. Excuse me. We only want to adjust these bolts on the bottom. Um, and that's making sure that it's level. And then the fourth and final step has to do with loading the filament and making sure that's all good to go. Um, so we're going to go ahead and level the build plate. So if you guys want to grab a piece of scrap paper and fold it in half, hot dog or hamburger, doesn't matter, and then set it on the build plate. Like that. Okay. Got that. So what we're going to do is we're going to auto home our printer and then check the tension of that paper. And we're going to check the, why the tension of that paper helps is because the, a folded piece of paper is two tenths of a millimeter, which is about how far the nozzle has to be from the bill plate itself. So we're going to drag that paper between the nozzle and the bill plate to where we feel a lot of tension between them. And then when we feel it dragging with a lot of tension, that's when we know that it's at the correct height. Because if it's too high, we won't feel anything or barely feel tension at all, and that'll just turn into a spaghetti mess when it tries to print because it's not close enough to stick to the plate. Um, just like if you were holding your toothbrush uh, right down low and you're squeezing toothpaste way up in the air and it was just going all over the place. Um, it also will create it to warp on the corners. If it's too far away, it'll warp up and it won't stick um, that surface down. And if it's too close, it'll dig into your model or dig into the bill plate. And so if the paper doesn't move at all, or you can't move, fit it under there, then that means that it's way too close. So we're going to try to find that happy medium where you can drag the paper. Like if you set your finger on the paper and then pull the paper with, with your hand, you should feel it dragging. And that's the type of tension that we want to feel it. So you can feel the vibrations of the paper as you're dragging it around on the nozzle. So to do that, and this is something you're only going to have to do when it messes up. So this is like maybe once every couple weeks. Um, <laughs> you're go ahead. So it won't be every time you print. Don't worry. Uh, you'll tap this button. And then you're going to spin it to where it says setup. And then you're going to go to where it says auto home. And that's going to move the nozzle to the, run, to the front corner and then move this all the way down to zero. Okay. And then when it stops moving, let me know. Okay, so one second, Drew. Back up. So once you hit setup, then what do you do? Auto home. Auto home? Mm -hmm. Okay. And everything's controlled by spinning and tapping that knob. Okay. And then when it stops moving, then let me know and we're we'll ready to move on to the next step. Okay. It's, it's going to move all the way down to zero. It's going down. Yeah. That one's going down still? Okay, cool. It's auto home, so it's like. Make something. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. This is Drew's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Drew, Amanda just joined us. Hello. <laughs> and Amanda used to um, work the MakerBot and Lesbot before. So, she's yeah. just joined us. Yeah. You like them? Like yeah, them? I like Will's lot better than MakerBot. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Of, it's complicated. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> So this is the process is pretty much the same. It's just a little bit different. So we're leveling the bill plate right now, um, and that's what we're kind of going over. So yeah, they stopped already. Okay, they did. sweet. All right, so now we're gonna tap the button, and then we're gonna go to where it says set up again, and then disable motors, and we're gonna tap that. And that will allow us to move the bill plate and the nozzle around. So. What we're going to do is we're going to move the bill plate and the nozzle to this front corner. And we want the paper to be in between it. So if the paper doesn't fit, then push down on the bill plate and make sure that paper fits under, in between. So it'll look like mine. And as I said, I'm going to pick mine up so you can see it. But you want to leave yours on the table. Just say, well, no, it hasn't done it. Okay, it doesn't do it. So after disable motor, what do we do? And move this to the front corner. Okay. And pull this bill plate up to the front corner as well. So it's like just on the other side of the clip. Okay. Now, if the paper is kind of impeding the, the, the movement, like it's. That's what we're going to adjust right now. So that's okay. So just go ahead and push down on the, on the bill plate. Like you can push down with your fingers, and then you'll be able to move it around and then move this over to where it needs to be with the paper between it. And then we're going to adjust that right now. 
Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Okay. So you guys have it in the front corner now? Well, yeah, hold on. We have one on there. Okay. Yeah, you can push down on this plate and move it over because we're going to adjust these little bolts on the bottom. Um, to make the tension not so much. Okay, got it, we got it. Okay, sweet. So now, there's this little nut right here, and this is what we are going to spin. So if you turn this, like if you're looking right at the printer, and you turn this counterclockwise, or to the left, it's gonna make it looser on top because it's tightening this spring. And if you turn it to the right, it's gonna make it tighter on top because it's loosening this spring, so it's pushing up. So if you can't move the paper at all, like mine, you can't move, I'm gonna turn mine this way, about a fourth of a turn, and then test it. A so little bit better, but not very good. And then go ahead and turn it again, and then test it. So small increments, and then test it. So I can move it, but the paper is still buckling when I'm trying to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it a tiny bit again, counterclockwise, and then now, there we go. Now it's moving, but it's still like, it's moving so much that it's, it's still buckling the paper. We don't want the paper to buckle. So I'm gonna go a little bit more. Now it's dragging like we want it to be. So we want it to be dragging, but not buckling the paper. Okay. How's yours? What do you think, you got it? And it takes some practice. That's why we're gonna do it. I think it's looser. You don't want it to buckle, you said. You don't want it to tighten. Yeah, you want to loosen it enough so you can drag it and feel it dragging on the paper, but not so loose that you can barely feel it and not so tight that the paper buckles. You want it to be able to drag. When you grab it with two fingers, you want it to be able to drag. Okay. Y'all think you got it? Mm, yes. So you're able to move it. Yeah? yeah? Okay, awesome. So now, go ahead and push the build plate back this way, forward. So then we're gonna adjust this one nut right here, and we're gonna do the same thing. So we have that paper between the nozzle, and we wanna be able to drag it, so mine, like it's not moving at all. So I'm gonna tighten this again. So I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise, and then try to, try to move it, and then turn it a little bit more, and then try to move it. And we want it to be the same amount of tension that it is on the front. There we go, now I feel it dragging. And then we want the same tension back here that we had up here, because that's how we're getting it level. So it's three points of the triangle, and if one of them is really tight, the other two are going to be pushed up. And if one of them is really loose, the other two are going to be pushed down like this. So we're trying to get all three of these points even. So it's this one, and then this one in the back, and then once those feel good, then we're going to go to the one on the inside. Y'all think you got it? I think so. Yeah, okay, sweet. And then now move this motor to the inside and then move the plate about to the middle. And then there's one right here too. So this one is gonna be a little different because it's gonna move the plate side to side like this. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and then you can adjust it a little bit. So I'm gonna tighten mine a little and then push it back and then test it. And then pull it out and then I'm gonna adjust it just a tiny bit more the other way and then push it back and then test it. And then tell you feel the same tension there as you felt on the outside two corners. Okay. And you want to be able to, you can like set your finger on here and then drag it so the paper is dragging. You want it to move smoothly, right? Yes. You want, it to, you want it to drag without it buckling. Like when I put my, my fingers on the paper, I can move it underneath it. It's not buckling. But okay. you feel it dragging. Okay. Because if it's too loose, it'll be too far away and it'll just turn into string because it has to stick to that to the bill plate as it's moving out. And that filament's gonna come out at a 90 degree angle stuck to the bill plate. So if it's too far up, you're gonna see a big gap as the, as the nozzle's moving by and the filament's just gonna dab up. That sounds like what's wrong with the maker box. Have you seen? Yeah, it sounds like what's wrong with the, the other one. Yeah, and the maker box, are, so the whole spots, they need to cover themselves. So mm -hmm. that's what's really Box. That's why, like, sometimes they will print really good on one side, but on another, and that one's not level. Okay. And that one's always been super hard. The same thing as this one. It's, it's, it's harder. harder. Yeah, it's harder on this one. Like, last one. I'm good right here. Okay, so now we need to move this back. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, the thing is, no 3D printer is perfect at leveling itself, like auto leveling mm -hmm. at all. Um, so even the ones that auto level, they still have their little quirks and stuff like that to, to try to get them to work because you even sometimes have to adjust those too. So the best way that we found is where you're actually leveling it manually because um, there just isn't one that works perfectly yet. Even if it says, oh, it's got a light sensor, or it's just got a touch sensor or something, it still might not be completely level. Mm -hmm. You get it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. okay. Awesome. So go ahead and pull the paper out. Woo! Okay. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to load the filament in. But before we do that, um, we're going to need to have this lifted up. So if you already have this lifted up, then you don't have to do this step. But because it's right down on the bill plate, we want to see the filament come out the end of the nozzle. So we're going to move this up by controlling it on the screen. So to do that, we're going to tap this button. So Drew, um, our CEO Angie, has walked in, and, and they're um, just giving a little tour. So. Hi. Hi, Drew. Hey, Angie. How's it going? How's it going? What are y'all webinaring on today? 3D printing. So... Uh, the 3D printers that you all bought come with unlimited training and support, and it's all. Oh, that is awesome! Maybe one day I'll actually get down here. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be real quiet, so y'all carry on. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this one. Uh, so. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up. So we're going to tap the button, and then go to where it says controls, and tap that. And then we're going to go to where it says move axis at the bottom there. And tap that. Okay. And then we're going to go move one millimeter. And tap that. Because everything on here is metric system. Okay. And then we're going to move the Z. That's the one that we want to move. But you can see that there's all these other ones you can move too, but we're going to move the Z for now. So tap that. And then spin this to like 30 or 40, 50, something like that. Um, 25.6 is an inch. So you just want to have it lifted up enough to where you can see underneath it. So just spin it to where it lifts up. And then now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, load the filament in right here. So this little part right here, that's where the filament loads. So to load it, you're going to make sure that when you're not using the filament, you have it through these holes here on the side. And that's what all these holes are for. So you can have it pulled through here to make sure it doesn't come untangled. Just like fishing line or weed eater line, you want to make sure it's through these holes when you're not using it. Mm -hmm. So we'll take it out of this hole so it can freely spin into our 3D printer. And then we're going to clip the end of it off. So we're going to clip the melted stuff off the end and also clip it into a point to make it easier for it to print. So we're going to clip it into a point by using the clippers that comes with your printer. Mm -hmm. so we'll kind of clip that into a point right there. And then that is what we're going to feed into our printer. So we want to line our filament up so it, so it feeds in pretty straight. And then the filament is going to go through this hole right here. And then it's going to go through this hole and then all the way through this white tube, about eight inches, until it doesn't move anymore. So go ahead and squeeze it, and then you can push it through that tube. And if it doesn't go in very well, you can wiggle it a little bit because it, ha it sometimes gets stuck right here. And that's why we cut it into a point mm -hmm. to make it easier to feed in. So sometimes that can be kind of tricky to feed through there. And then once you get through, then you'll just keep squeezing this little lever right here and then feeding it through. Because the trick is squeezing this lever. And you don't have to squeeze it all the way, just a tiny bit to release the tension to be able to push it through. All the way through, and you'll see it going through the tube, all the way through until it doesn't go anymore. Okay. We just push it manually? Yeah. yeah. Push it manually, all the way through. Yes, we thought that. And you could do this using the, the machine if you want, the same settings that we lifted this up with, but it's way easier to just do it manually. Is there a trick, like can we use pliers to, to, to um, squeeze that spring? Um, no, you, no, you can just squeeze it with your hands. It's kind of it's going to be kind of tough to do, but you'd only have to squeeze it a tiny bit because it has to be quite a bit of tension holding the filament to this gear. So you just have to barely squeeze it, and once you actually get the filament in there, you can actually push it without squeezing it. Yeah, I think so. Once you get it through this part, you can push it without squeezing. It'll be 
Should we see it come through the nozzle? Are we supposed to see it come out? No, because it's not heated up. That's a good okay. one. So it just stops, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's not working. Okay. Y'all get it? Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now we want to make sure that the filament isn't coming off the end of the spool, because if it can come off like this, it can get tangled and cause problems. So you want to make sure that it's stuck on the spool holder just like that, so it's feeding straight into the nozzle. So now we're ready for that fourth troubleshooting step. So the first, first one was making sure that all of our cura settings were right. The second one was making sure that the machine itself was all running properly and nothing was unplugged or broken. The third one, we checked the leveling, making sure the leveling was going good. And the fourth one, those are issues with filament. So uh, that has to do with loading and unloading the filament. And those are also the two steps that you can do if you ever are having a clog or a problem with the printer itself. You never want to take apart the extruder assembly and stuff like that. And if you feel like uh, you want to take it apart or somebody wants to take it apart, please contact us and we'll have you try some stuff and then walk you through how to do it. Because there's a very particular way that it has to go back together. So these two steps that you can do will clear nearly all the clogs. And you also have a filament unclogging tool that comes in all the toolkits. That's a little wire that you can floss the nozzle out with as well. So um, to load filament or to unload filament, it has to be heated up. And when you load filament, you're actually pushing out the, cl the clog that could be in there because you're forcing it down through the heated part of the nozzle because that's normally where clogs happen. But these have what's called a Bowden extruder, which means the gear system is far away from where the heating part, part is, so that prevents most clogs and helps a lot. But you can also do what's called a soft pull. Every time you unload the filament, if it's heated up to just 100 degrees, you'll soft pull the filament out of it. And that is when it's in a semi-solid state, it's like changing the oil in a car. It'll pull the gunk and stuff out of that nozzle and can help prevent clogs. And you can do that in your other 3D printers as well. Like when they're not fully heated, pull the filament out because that'll clear the clog and clear out gunk that can be inside of it to help you clear it through. And then you can also, when that it's cleared out and it's heated up, that's when you can floss it with that little flossing tool if you want. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at those settings right here to be able to set that up. So you can leave the filament plugged in when it's not running, that's totally fine. You can like have it un uh, unplugged with filament loaded, that's great. Um, but you only have to change the filament when you want to do the, uh, sw swap the filament out, you'll do this step. So we'll go down to setup, just like we did before. Mm -hmm. And then when you scroll down, you'll see preheat PLA and preheat soft pull. So preheat soft pull, that's what we'll do when we unload. And then preheat PLA, that's what we're going to do now when we load. So go ahead and tap the button. And then you'll see the temperature right here at top, that's what it's heating up to. So when that temperature gets to 220, then what we're going to do is we're going to manually push the filament right here to push it out through the nozzle. That'll clear your old color of filament out too. And then also make sure that it's fully loaded um, to be able to ready to print. And then you'll see it coming out of the nozzle right there. The only part that gets hot is that nozzle. This part doesn't get hot. Um, this back part right here, this, this grommet doesn't get hot. And even the protective coating around the nozzle up here, it, you can even touch that with your finger too and not get burned because it's covered with a, with a special heat tape and a insulator, mm -hmm. an insulation. So it's only the tip, just like a, uh, a hot glue gun. So I have a question for you. Depending sure. on the item that we print, is or is there just like a suggestive standard temperature? Um, and I ask this because I spoke with a man that uses the, the mini, um, what is that, mini Lesbot? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, sometimes when you get a clog on your nozzle, the best thing is to increase the temperature. I haven't tried that, and then it'll make the filament flow a bit easier. He's, he was indicating on some of the things that you build, it gives you um, a recommended temperature. He said sometimes you have to go above that. Uh, technically, really? he's right. Um, that's why you're printing at 220 instead of 190 or 200. Um, a lot of PLA, like on the MakerBot, I think the default setting is 190, um, which actually can be too soft, and it's going to make that gearing system work harder, and it can actually dig like a big half moon shape in it because it's trying to push it through because the nozzle isn't heated up enough. Um, so that's why we set our printing temperature to 220 um, to help it uh, liquefy it better to make it print um, uh, more easily. Um, that's why it's, it's, it printed a little bit hotter because most PLA, it prints at about 190 or 200, but this PLA actually has a special ingredient in it too that makes it more flexible 
and durable than other PLA, um, and also just helps it to flow a lot better at 220. So that's why we set that temperature to 220. Um, and then you can also like, that's why we do that soft pull too. That can pull out gunk that might be inside of there. And then when you push out the new filament through, then that makes sure that it's fully loaded too. And, and when it's liquefied, it'll print a lot better. So yeah, technically he's totally right. So you'll see the temperature is pretty close to 220? Uh, yeah, it's on 220. Okay, so now we can go ahead and squeeze this and then push it until you see the filament coming out. You might not even have to squeeze it if you don't want to. And you can just push it and then you'll see the filament coming out at the end of the nozzle. Right, oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can use the pliers or the tweezers from your toolkit to reach in and grab it and get that stuff out of the way. And you can touch the filament right away, but you don't want to touch the nozzle. So I don't know when the little piece of filament went that I pushed out. Here we go. Here's the filament. So you can grab the filament thank you, thank you. right away. You can squeeze it out and grab it because it cools in like five seconds. It's totally fine. It's because it's a uh, PLA is a special thermoplastic that's made from corn that makes it so it melts and resolidifies really quick. So now that that's loaded, do you guys see that filament coming out? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Go ahead and unplug it. Okay. Unplug the, the machine? The printer, yep. Okay. All right. So the most common way that clogs happen on any 3D printer, and especially that we've seen on this one, because we have these in over 300 schools across the country, that happens is that the printer is left on and heated when it's not printing. So with whatever 3D printer that you have, if you guys load the filament or if you have a student load the filament and then they forget to hit, to hit print or they walk away from it and they leave it heated and on, that will actually bake the filament into the nozzle and cause a clog. Because um, it stays heated and instead of, it's like a funnel basically, that the filament is pushing through and it's pushing out through that funnel. And if it stays heated inside that funnel and it's not pushing through, it's just gonna bake all that filament that's inside of there. It's like burning something in the oven because it's made from corn. So it's gonna turn into carbon. And that is when you'll have to do those soft pulls and to try to force the filament through into using the, the uh, filament uh, unclogging tool and stuff like that. So just having the printer off when it's not using, is, using it is the best way to prevent that. So whatever 3D printer that you have, um, if you just turn it off when it's not printing, that's how you can prevent that. Because you don't want to leave it on and heated for more than a couple minutes because otherwise it can definitely start to uh, cause some problems. Because when it's printing, it's fine. It can print for days. Like right now I'm printing something that's going to be, it's going to be six days. Um, before it's done. So that's fine because it's still like moving all the filament out through that nozzle. But when it stays in there, it gets baked in there. Um, and that can cause some issues and problems no matter what type of 3D printer that you have. So that's why we did that. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, sweet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug it back in and we're ready to print. So if you have your SD card in there, we're ready for that fourth step. So you took your model, your STL file, you put it in Cura to translate it, then we transferred it to the SD card and put that on our printer, and then now we're hitting print. So to do that, we'll tap this button, and then when you scroll down to where it says print from SD, then you'll access the SD card, in, and you can say refresh SD if it's on when you uh, take the SD card in or out. And then see, you can see here, there's the one that I saved right there with Drew. You can also go to test prints, and there's some test prints inside of there too, so you can click on that and print some stuff as well. And then you can say back, and then you can go to right here where it says Drew, and tap that. Whatever one you want. And then now the robot is gonna heat itself up to the printing temperature, it's gonna zero itself out, and then it's gonna start printing. So you don't have to level it, and you don't have to preheat it every time you print. The robot's just gonna do all that by itself. It's basically a robotic hot glue gun. It's just gonna go and make stuff layer by layer by layer by layer. So now it's just gonna heat up, and then we'll see if you guys leveled it right. 3D printing party. <laughs> this is so much. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions? I'll team that. I know it was a bunch of information that I just like threw at you guys, it's like fire hose. Um, but that's all we're here to help. So if you guys I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So um in my process of like looking for 3D printers previously, a lot of the things that I found was that you want to have walls in a 3D printer to like keep the heat in there. But I see that there's many that have, are very open, like like yours is. Is that just like a myth? 
is there certain ways to where that is beneficial? Uh, yes, certain ways that it is beneficial. So um, it's a yes and no to that. Um, for, we're printing in PLA, which I assume is probably what you have for your Lulz bots and your MakerBot too, probably, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so PLA, you don't have to have that enclosure um, okay. because PLA is really easy to print in because it has a low melting temperature um, than other materials and it doesn't have to have that enclosed space because it cools at a more consistent rate and, and it cools really easily. So it's, it's the easiest thing in our opinion to print. That makes sense. Um, and it doesn't need to have an enclosed space. But if you are printing in other materials, some of them do. Um, and if you're going to be printing in stuff that's going to be like outside permanently, um, yeah. or if you're going to print in something um, along those lines, then yeah, sometimes you do need to have that enclosed space, especially if you're going to print in ABS. Um, yeah. ABS yeah. is oil-based plastic, and mm -hmm. it does help to have an enclosure on that. And we have printers that print in ABS, but these, you can't print in ABS on yeah. for that reason. Um, okay. like, and we've, I mean, technically you can. We've had some schools do it, but it warps yeah. up really bad, and that's where the warping comes from. Yeah, that's um, what, that's, yep. So if you have a heated bill plate and an enclosure, the heated bill plate, that helps it to the, the uh, printer to cool at a consistent rate so that bottom layer won't like warp up mm -hmm. on the bottom. And then having that enclosed space also helps it to cool consistently um, because ABS is notorious for like warping up on the sides and having some problems and issues and stuff. So if you're going to print an ABS, yes, you do need to have, it helps, you don't have to, but it helps to have that enclosed space. But if you're a PLA, you don't. Um, but that's why we love these so much because they print in PLA, but they also print in any PLA composite too. So um, once you guys get used to 3D printing, if you want to do some upgrades, it's like 50 bucks if you want to upgrade this printer to be able to print in flexible materials. You can print in carbon fiber infused PLA. You can print in graphene PLA, which means it's electrically conductive. Yeah. Um, you can print in wood fill. You can print uh, in tons of different ones. Um, carbon fiber, if I mentioned that. I might have just said that twice. Uh, all the different things that you can print with it. Uh, steel, too, and magnetic iron uh, filament that's actually like you can make magnets and print magnets with it. Uh, you just have to upgrade the nozzle and the extruder assembly, which is like a, a two like simple fixes that we can do like a session like this to help you install it. Wow. Um, that's awesome. And that filament is about the same price as, as ours, it's just they're a little bit smaller rolls. So it's only 750 kilograms instead of, uh, or 750 grams instead of a kilogram. That's awesome. Thank you for answering my question. Yeah, you bet. So how's it look? It's looking, it's looking good. Oh, so you should watch those first couple layers and make sure that they're sticking. Cause that's when you'll know if it's level right, if those first couple layers are sticking. So does it look like they're sticking? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Like, hey, you guys leveled them. Good no. job. <laughs> yeah. so I do have a question. Yeah. Now, as soon as it starts, you see some of the filament coming out. Mm -hmm. that, does would that cause a problem? So no. Uh, and the reason why is it prints a line around the outside of your model. That's a really good question. Because what that line is going to do is it's going to knock off all that extra filament, and then okay. also make sure that the pressure is built up inside of your nozzle for it to ooze out well, and to show you that it's level. So that's why it kind of prints the line around the outside of your model, and then it starts. Mm -hmm. Model itself. It's a yeah, I saw like a little piece out, and on the other print, um, 3D printers, it would just, it wouldn't stick. So that's why I was asking, like, yeah, if it's bothering you, you can reach in and grab it with like the clippers while it's running and like pull it out of the way. Um, but it's it'll be fine. Um, because okay. you can usually just flip it off the model too, and that might mean like, oh, excuse me, on the MakerBots especially, you can you can just make them a little bit closer to the nozzle. Mm -hmm. They're probably the auto leveling ones with a little light sensor. Is that what those are? Maybe. What, like the light sensor? Uh, level it? No, the make it No, okay, cool. So, do they have like a little fan, fans on the front that you can see? Yes. 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 Awesome. That means that, so those are, th those are much better than the light sensor ones. So that's great. Uh, you'll do the same leveling thing that we did with these, um, with the paper. Uh, and then you can like feel the tension and then you can even adjust it a tiny bit while it's printing those first couple layers too um, Until it looks good. That's called a like hot leveling and you can do that on ours as well Like you can kind of move those knobs a little bit until you see the filament coming out at a 90 degree angle Like as it's moving out that filament is oozing through um, So you can kind of adjust it a bit and then once you get it looking good Then you can stop the print clear off that that cruddy filament and then hit print again And it'll be level exactly to where you need it um, And that helps sometimes too So do you all have any more questions for me? I'm right now? <laughs> I'm good.
Okay, sweet. So that's all I got. Um, if you wouldn't mind sending me those pictures, either emailing them to me, um, or you can text them to me too. Uh, and uh, my my phone number's on the email that I'll send you here in a little bit. Um, and you, we can have uh, all that stuff to send back to you. And then probably in the beginning of January or something, we'll set up a time, um, the video conference, and install that stuff um, for you. Great. And our service team will follow up with you on like next steps and things like that. Well, thank you so much, Drew. I appreciate it. You thank have a you. very Christmas, happy holidays, yeah, and we'll have a great Christmas holiday too. Early, see you on. Uh, have a good one. All right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, bye bye.